Welcome to Home From Home. I'm Brim Watkins, your guide as we explore the regions of Haidel Bihar in Hungary and Bihor in Romania. This time we've come deep into Bihor County to explore Romania's Bihari mountains. Plan A was to catch the end of winter and go skiing. Plan B, if spring had already arrived, was to go hiking. However, we found ourselves with a bit of a problem because we're somewhere in between and the weather's not good for skiing or hiking. And so now we need to try and find out what you do in a skier's and hiker's paradise when the weather's rubbish for both. Right, the sun has come out for maybe five whole minutes, um, but it's going to be really cold again by tonight. So we're going to chop some wood to save us from the harsh Romanian winter here in the mountains. Um, I've never chopped wood before, so I'm here with Bitsin, who is our camp leader here. Meet uh, So, first time we need to make a little piece from the wood. Yep. That's, uh, with what, my axe. With your axe. Because we want to make a fire. Yep, fire. Fire, fire is good. Fire, fire is hot. Yeah. I understand yeah, yeah. that bit. And uh, you need uh, to take a uh, distance. Okay. If you are too, the, the distance is too short, uh, you can uh, chop your legs. Yes, that's bad. That's very bad. Don't, don't want to chop my so, legs. So, I, uh, I use my uh, right hand to yeah. here and left hand to here. Yep. So, I just... No. just like, so, just the, like the distance is good for you. Don't chop your legs. Don't chop my legs. Okay. This distance? Don't chop my legs, chop the wood. Okay. That's the rule. Let's right. make it. Let's so make I just, it. So, I just like... Let's make it. Oh, my Jesus. It's good. Oh. That's bad. It's easier than it looks. Oh. So it's not meant to fall off again? Like ever? Uh, ever. Is that possible? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, change the wood. Change, change the wood? Yeah, I Take think I think actually, I think it was probably the, pro the wood. The problem is with the wood. I think definitely. Not with your axe, not with the axeman. I think I think actually that's unchoppable wood. <laughs> but now it's too heavy for me to pick it up. You show me. You do yes, one. I, you do yes, one. I show. Show, show it for you. Me. I will stand so. here and admire your power. So this is the good distance. Yep. Hold the Hold axe. The axe. Lift right. the axe uh -huh. and shrug. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come. I show this. <laughs> yep, yep. But you, I'm you need to know this if you if you want to live in a forest. <laughs> I don't want to live in a forest. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The wood, the wood is, the wood has done me wrong. Oh, that was good. Hell that yes! That was very good. Hell yes! <laughs> oh, right, right. I'm not, a, I'm not a good teacher, but I, I you, think, are, you, I are, you are a good... Uh, I think if you've taught me to chop wood, I think you've, <laughs> you've achieved something nigh on impossible. So like from this angle now? Oh, we don't want to do an ice in case I fall over. Right. No. Yes, that was very nice. <laughs> right. You are right. stronger. <laughs> how, how small do we have to make him? Uh, like you, you, you need to make the little uh, pieces because we want to make fire. Yeah, we want to yeah, make fire. We want to make fire. We want to make fire from the wood that I'm chopping <laughs> with an axe on a mountain in Romania. <laughs> wow. Whew. This is the candles? This? Kindle, kindling. Kindling. So that, that's the size I want. Yes, it's good. I think, I think actually I'm just becoming quite dangerous now. It's releasing too much anger. So I shall give <laughs> yeah. you... Look, look, I shall look. give you my successful piece of kindling. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you should do the rest now.
this is your kindling. Go there. Go there. No. Most country is a mountainous region in Romania, lying at the intersection of five counties in the Ocuseni Mountains. The inhabitants are also known as the Moats, and there are many theories about their origins. Amongst others, it has been suggested that they descend from the Dacians, Alans, Slavs and Germans. The date of their arrival is unknown, but during their centuries in the mountains, they have developed some unique traditions. The most spectacular is the maiden fair of Mount Goina, where families would bring their marriageable daughters in the hope of finding them a husband. Before we go explore the region a little bit more, I am going to talk to Bogdan Brisku, who is an expert on the people who live here in the area, the Mords, and we want to find out a little bit more about their lifestyle and, well, and who they are. So who are the Mords? Well, uh, the Motsis are Romanians who are living in the highlands, in central Transylvania, in the Apusen Mountains. But actually, Motsis are only the population who are living in only about, let's say, 14 to 16 villages um, upside the Kumpen town from central Apusen Mountains. And so, what is it that makes the Mots different from other Romanians? Well, um, the lifestyle, uh, which is... Um, different than the, others Roman the other Romanians, their occupation is mainly woodcraft. So we'll not find uh, moths to be a uh, regular peasant to plowing the field, mm. or you will not find uh, a moth being a commerciant. Yeah. They're just uh, working the woods. And do they, do they produce a lot of timber, lots of wood for sale? As well? Yes, a lot of timber or a lot of um, kind of, it's called in Romanian shindrila. It's a kind of... Uh, wooden tiles to put it on the roof of the house oh, or see, yeah. wooden vessels or mm -hmm. spoons but this is the only occupation because mm -hmm. it's a very poor area nothing grows not even the grass it's it's growing there it's only fir tree and stone yeah. so they are working only with the woods they're living a, a very simple um, rural life mm -hmm. so very peaceful in time of peace they're very calm um, very empathetic empathic people uh, very full of life, speaking a lot, yeah. because probably because they meet each other very rare, because their villages <laughs> are very extremely spread. Uh, and they're, so they're very small, aren't they, these villages? Uh, yes, in terms of grouping the houses, because one village can uh, be spread to 10 kilometers. Uh, but, but with in, just, in a just house, a yes, house, two house uh, here, yeah. three house, five kilometers. So when you say in the mountains, in the mosque that I'm going to my neighbor, you can travel to two hours yeah. to your next uh, to, the, to the neighbor. So, so the mosques enjoy living in the mountains. Then yes, a lot. And yeah. do, do they go climbing and skiing? And no, never, because they're such a peasant lifestyle and very yeah. extremely poor. Uh, they never afforded to uh, to climb or to mm -hmm. ski, to go to ski. So traditionally speaking, a Mots, you'll never see him on the on the skis. Yeah. Practically, he's just trying to to earn his uh, everyday mm. bread. To er so that's, everyday. that's interesting. So the skiing that people do in the Bihar mountains now is a very new Import. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. it's a very new import. Their uh, entire uh, some villages of Mots transformed their traditional way of life of uh, working the woods mm -hmm. in this kind of touristic attraction. So a lot of people now going to the g mountains to the Mots villages and go skiing, and uh, Mots people can earn easier their money mm -hmm. and their living. So you yourself are a Mots, but you weren't yes. born in the mountains. Uh, what's your relationship with the home country? Like? Well. Uh, I always feeling extremely, extremely glad to go back home in the mountains, because all the, all my family is living there. My cousins, my nephews, my grandpa, my grandfathers are buried uh, there. Um, 
So it's it's a, a special feeling when when I go to the mountains. Uh, the the sun is brighter, the <laughs> the grass is greener. Even it's cold even in the summer in the mountains, yeah. but for me it's uh, like nowhere else. The next day was dry enough for us to go on a little hike. Our guides were Janos and Attila, two local residents who volunteer for the mountain rescue service. The route took us up a snow-covered valley. It was a steep and slippery climb, but the views were lovely and the air was incredibly clear. After an hour's walking, we made it to the top of the valley. Just over the crest, something incredible was waiting for us. So after walking for about an hour, we've made it now to the top of one of the hills here. And suddenly when you get here, this huge ravine opens up in front of you. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, I'm here with Attila, who's another one of the guides. I call me as a sakadék. Felértünk-e szakadékhoz, ez ezt úgy hívják, hogy rosda szakadék. Jó, jó. Ez egy eróziós keletkezésű szakadék, ami évről évre mind terjed és nő. Jó. Akkor ez csak víz volt, amit ez csinált. Igen, tehát a víz, a víz az eső, Jó, mert az és az erózió keletkezése, mosása, az bontsa lefele. Jó. Nehéz, innen látszani, de az, az mi a méret? Az, az... Tehát itt vannak, vannak olyan, ö, olyan ö, méterek, hogy olyan 100 és 300 méter közt 300. vannak. Hó, akkor nem akarnánk be nem, 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 nem lenne jó belesni. <laughs> jó. Um, és az, um, akkor ez mindig nagyobb? Ez mind évről évre nő és csak nő. És ez, akkor ez a norancs um, sárga szín. Ez a rosda szín, ez, igen, ez a uh, fém, fém, fém ért, meg bauxit ért. Jó, jó. És lehet keverése. Lehet itt hát uh, fel szokták használni, igen, nem tudom, ilyen kitermelése, fém kitermelése esetleg. Jó, de ez nagyon. Furcsa látni, van itt van csak az, az nagyon szép táj, van egy sok igen, fa, és hirtelen itt van, nagy lyuk. Benne van ez nagy, a nagy lyuk, uh, az jó. szakadék. De ez, ez furcsa is, mert ez um, Debrecen, ez nincs messze Debrecen, Debrecenben élek. Nincs messze, és, uh, de az annyira simma a Tadalföldön, és itt hirtelen az a szép hegyek, és az, az annyira jó, annyira jó. Igen. De sajnos most kell mennünk vissza. Hát Lehet, visz, mennünk. visszamegyünk, igen, egy, egy másik ösvényen hogy ne itt jöjjünk be, jó. menjünk le, ahol feljöttünk, mert eléggé jeges volt az ösvény. Jó, jó. És lássunk egy kis más tájat is. Igen, igen. On the way back, I stopped to speak to Janos about his work as a mountain rescuer, and I asked him if he had any tips for keeping safe while hiking. Tehát néhány általános szabály, hogy az ember olyan helyre, ahol nem volt, vezetővel menjen, vagy kellőképpen tájékozódjon előtte. 
Nagyon fontos, hogy úgy tervezze meg a túrát, hogy visszaérjen sötétedés előtt, mivel a tájékozódás egy idegen terepen sötétedés után nagyon nehéz. Mindenképpen legyen megfelelő felszerelése, amin értem a ruházatot és ennivalót. Tehát számoljon, ennivalóba is úgy kell vinni, hogy számoljon rá, hogy ha, mi van, ha eltévedek, mi van, ha nem érek vissza időben. Mm. És ruházat van is, mi van, ha nem értem vissza időben, mi van, ha elkapott az éjszaka, mi van, ha megváltozott az idő, mivel itt hegyekben pillanatok alatt változik. Itt is az előbb sütött a nap, és mindjárt esik az eső. <gül> és azért legyen mindig egy ruházat az embernél pluszban. Jó. Főleg télen nagyon nagyok a különbségek, egyik pillanatban süt a nap és plusz fokok vannak, másik pillanatban mínusz nagyon sok. Hát nyáron is ugyanez van, hogy, hogy ha esik az eső és fúj a szél, az embernek a hőérzete nagyon csökken. Tehát sokan azt mondják, hogy hát nem lehet megfagyni, csak ha fagy. Nem igaz, mert egy hideg eső néhány fokkal teljesen kihűti. So we were really lucky with the weather on our hiking trip. It was great fun and the rain stayed away until just at the very end when we got back home. Uh, I still managed to get completely wet by playing in the snow, but I've changed my trousers now and I am starving because hiking always makes you very hungry. We've come to a local restaurant and I'm here now with Morella, who is the head chef here, and we're gonna prepare some Romanian food, uh, starting with a starter, which is going to be uh, a mortis platter, a selection of cold things from here in the region. Um, yeah, right, let's make it. We start by smothering the platter with a veritable cornucopia of pork products. Offal sausage and salami are followed by smoked fatty bacon, coarse pate and cured ham. The platter is then scattered with chopped tomatoes and red onion. Cows and goat's milk cheeses follow. And finally, a suspicion of lettuce. Now that we've prepared the starter, we're going to move on to the main course, which is a dish called takitora. And I don't speak any Romanian, but I think, I think it's kind of a ragu. I think that's what we're going to make. So basically, I'm going to make it, and then afterwards I can tell you what it is. Um, so we start with the bacon, salona. Uh, oh, and oil, yeah, we start with the oil, that's helpful. Um, everything? No. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Prima dată prăjim slănina. Așteptăm un pic. So basically by frying it off first, what you're doing is releasing all the fat from the bacon, which will then be what we fry all the other ingredients in. Um, is the bacon smoked? Umado? Umat? Fumat? Afumat. Fumat? Slanina afumata. 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 You can cook and learn Romanian at the same time. I should found a new school of language tuition. Un produs tradicional. <laughs> a traditional product. It's so much easier than Hungarian as well. Uh, I should have come to Romania. Um, ready? Yes. Uh, and now we're putting in the meat, which is pork and beef. Um, how much time? Uh, Tempo? Tempo? 20 de minute. 20, 20. That either means 2 or 12. It's either 2 or 12 minutes. I think probably 2, because it looks quite cooked to me. So it does 2. So, 2 minutes, 2 minutes. So it turned out that doje actually meant 20, not 2. So this meat has now been cooking for 20 minutes and is now ready. Uh, and I think it's time to carry on now. Um, so now it's onion. Yes, hot yeah. I dog them chapa. Boya de dulce. Oh, 
and paprika. So maybe it's not that different from Hungarian food after all. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, Bine. Uh, it smells really good. <laughs> Pasta de arde. Oh, it's paprika paste. It's kind of cooked down peppers, I think. Whatever it is, it's nice, so it's fine. Stingem cu vin alb. Whoa. <laughs> I think that was wine. <laughs> um, you know, oh. Do I still have eyebrows? Usturoi. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and garlic. Everything she puts in now, I'm standing back and then it suddenly explodes. Carnaz <laughs> de pork. Ah, and some more salami. Suc de roșii. Ah. Have tomato puree, almost tomato juice. Hmm. It's interesting, it's got loads of kind of elements from other things that I know, like ragu and kind of Hungarian stews and casseroles and things, but all cooked up in a really different way to what I'm used to. I'm really looking forward to see how it tastes in the end, actually. After nearly burning off my face, I'm hoping it's going to be good. Mai pun un pic de vin ai grijă. Okay, some more wine. Uh, fuego? No, no. 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 <laughs> The garnish is mamaliga, a Romanian staple made by stirring cornmeal into boiling water. The result is a thick paste, strangely delicious and incredibly filling. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm really intrigued actually about this stuff because what it's going to taste like. Because I still can't quite figure out what it is. I guess, I guess it's a stew. It's a little bit like Hungarian cocoa, but with everything kind of done in a different order. Um, You can see the texture for this guy. It's, it's just not quite like any other food. Mm. Oh, bean. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it has a really rich flavour. Very good. And white wine with tomatoes is definitely something I'm going to be trying again. Very good. Um, thank you very much. Pleasure. Muito mesk. Muito mesk. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Day three of our trip to Romania and it's definitely raining. We've figured out one way that you can escape whatever the weather wants to throw at you and that's by going underground. And we're really lucky because this region is actually full of caves and we've come now to look at the most famous which is the Bears Cave. And here I am deep underground in the cave. Cave consists of a series of galleries and chambers with a total length of 1,500 meters. It was only discovered in 1975 by miners extracting marble with dynamite. It's really strange to think before this was discovered, there was never anybody in here. 
it was just here all by itself, being beautiful. But the cave was inhabited long before humans discovered it. It was once home to a colony of cave bears, now extinct. When the cave entrance collapsed, the bears were forced to turn on each other and their remains are still to be seen. Huh, there's an animal here on the camera. Look at that, there's something, there's something there on the microphone. It's like a fly. Do, an do animals live here in the cave? Mm, no. No, did we bring no, that in? We bring that this out. This one is from outside. Oh, we've infected the cave. But with our... <laughs> in this cave, live uh, something. Yeah? But, Apart uh, from bears? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, small box. Small Bo box? Box. Insects. Oh, bugs. Yeah. Yes. Really? Well, here in the, and do they go out to eat and when, come back when in? When we come back, yeah. and. Uh, where we go out. You they live insects. Yeah. Cool, cool. But so it's not one of those caves that's full of bats then? In this cave, no. No. The caves were formed by the action of a water flowing through the soft limestone rock. Over thousands of years, the water has gradually deposited calcium carbonate crystals in incredible formations. One stalagmite even bears an uncanny resemblance to a certain American president. The cave is open all year round at a constant temperature of 10 degrees. And that's the end of our stay here in the Bihor Mountains in Romania. And I think we've seen that no matter what the weather and no matter what plans go wrong, you can have a really great time here, above and below ground. I hope you've enjoyed watching me prancing around here in the mountains and I hope you'll join us next time on Home From Home. <laughs>